All right, well, my name is Mark, and I'm the owner of Lancaster Homebrew, and today I'm going to show you how to get started in brewing your own beer at home. We'll start with the ingredients here. So the first thing I have laid out is some specialty grains that we're going to use, and so that will be ingredient number one. And then you'll find a uh, muslin bag, and you'll put your, your specialty grains in that muslin bag. The uh, next ingredient today is going to be our malt extracts and the instruction kits that's labeled as uh, DME, abbreviated that way. You may also find this is a recipe will call for a liquid malt extract and that'll come in a can. Our third ingredient is going to be our hops. Usually you're going to be have one packet for bittering hops and then one packet for aroma hops. And I do have what you can see is a, uh, a very used hop bag uh, that I'm going to be putting the hops in today. Our, um, other ingredient is going to be water, obviously, that we're going to be brewing with. Uh, the rule of thumb is if the water tastes fine to drink, then it's going to be fine for brewing. Um, our last ingredient is going to be our yeast. I'm using a liquid yeast today. Just as far as a couple of the equipment that you're going to use, um, I have a thermometer here that will take temperatures while we're steeping our grains and also when we're cooling it down. Uh, just a basic uh, measuring pitcher. And then down lower here, I have our fermenting bucket with our lid and airlock. That will be a, we'll get ready to sterilize a little bit later on. And then it's handy to keep a, a bucket. I have two gallons of water and a sterilizer in here. The, uh, the equipment kits come with Easy Clean. So I have two gallons of water mixed with two tablespoons of Easy Clean. So the last thing then is our brew pot. And um, I have that ready with, uh, with my water actually already heating up in here. The ingredient kits generally call to use two and a half gallon of water. Um, and last is, is uh, a long handle spoon comes in handy for stirring some stages, so I have that set aside here. Okay, so we're, we'll start off with our steeping grains. I'll first grab my thermometer. I'm going to put it in the pot here so we can monitor our temperature. Now, I did transfer the, the specialty grains I had in my bag. I got them poured over to the muslin bag, and so that'll be our first ingredient we're going to add to our pot here. Initially, I like to kind of hold it in the, the water and just kind of bob it around a little bit so the water can get absorbed into the grains. Uh, one little note here when the heat, the heat is on, we don't want to just drop it in and let it go because it, it can stick to the pot initially. So usually I like to just hold it in and make sure everything gets good and soaked up. And then at that point, you can either tie the bag uh, shut uh, and throw it in. I have an old uh, clothespin. And I like to just kind of clip it to the pot, that way I can pull it out rather easily. A few key notes to remember then for our first step here is that uh, you don't want to boil the, the uh, steeping grains. Um, when you, if, you ha if you end up boiling the grains, you can get extract some extra tannins and things that can add some harshness to the beer, which is, is going to be undesirable. We just want to, want to have at a, at a good temperature, say between 150, 160 degrees. We want to keep that temperature for about 20, uh, most in ingredient kits it'll, it'll call for 20 minutes. In some cases you might go a little longer, 30 minutes to 45 minutes to, to just extract some more of the, the flavors and so forth into the beer. Uh, we've reached our, our 20 minutes and so I'm going to remove the grains here and we'll kind of move into step two. Um, instructions will tell you not to squeeze things too hard. You can kind of lightly press the bag if you want. I have my spoon here and kind of press it against the side of the pot a little bit. You don't want to squeeze it too hard because some of the um, some of the grit of the grain can come in, end up getting through and coming into the beer, and which we kind of prefer not. So. And then I'm going to transfer it over to my, my measuring pot here and let it kind of drain off a little bit more. So at this point, I'm going to take my thermometer out because we don't really need that at this stage. And we're going to add, go to step two, which is adding our malt extract syrups or dry powders. As far as adding our, our extract syrups and powders, is we don't want to add it too fast. Um, you just want to go a little bit at a time and you want to constantly stir it. If you pour this whole bag in and you don't stir it, you're going to have a huge lump of sugar that's probably going to go to the bottom of the pot and end up burning. If you scorch the sugars of the pot, you've pretty much ruined the beer in most cases. Alright, so I'm adding my second bag of dry malt extract into the, the brew here. Um, Depending on your ingredient kit, there could be some other extracts or sugars that could go in at this time. A couple to mention would be uh, corn sugar, 
uh, a maltodextrin powder which adds body and viscosity to the beer without adding color or flavor. Belgian candy syrup or, or, or rock candy can go in at this time. Of course your liquid malt extracts can go in. If you're worried about the burning thing you can uh, kind of bring it off the heat source temporarily and in fact mine's kind of boiling up now so I'm actually going to do that. Um, and uh, so because we, we don't want to have a boil over here or, or burning. The, the, the main reason for adding hops into our beer is for, uh, is for like I mentioned earlier, for bitterness. And if you want a real hoppy bitter beer, obviously we're going to add more hops to the beer. And you can see an alpha acid of 4.6. Uh, this would be considered a fairly low alpha acid, so it's, it means the lower the number, the less bitterness it's going to have. So we're uh, we're doing a, a light wheat beer; it's not going to be very bitter. So I got my bittering hops here. I just put them in my uh, my hop bag here, and we're going to set this in and uh, just kind of get this wet here. I'm going to clip it to my pot. And uh, then we're going to transfer back over to the heat here. Once you learn your heat source or your stove you're working with, you'll kind of know where, where the heat setting should be. I always keep it on high. Generally you'll find then you'll have to, uh, to turn it back a little bit so it, for it to settle down. It's starting to look a little better here. You can kind of see it rolling in the middle there. Still a little foamy. Once we hit that just nice rolling boil, then we can walk away from our uh, our pot and it's usually pretty safe it's just that transition can take a few minutes to get where you want it so once we've hit our rolling boil like this now it's time to set our timer generally for most recipes it's going to be a one hour boil time to get our bitterness in the key for uh, the 60 minute boil is so the bittering hops that we've added in um, uh, gives it enough time to actually add, add that uh, bitterness to the beer. So basically at this point we'll just follow our instructions and when it says to throw in our next addition of hops or spice we throw them in and uh, and just kind of move along. So so here you can see now that, that that foam and froth that you saw earlier is now gone away. Uh, that's normal. Um, it took us probably about five minutes to get there, but but now we now we're into a place where we're it's just rolling along. All right, we're just about up with our 60-minute boil, and we're in the last few minutes, and so we're going to add our finishing hops. So I'm going to open my bag up and drop them in. If you don't, if you're not using a hop bag, you can just toss them right in the boil. Anything, any hops that we put in at the beginning of the boil, those bittering hops are going to be strictly for bittering. Uh, any aromas that were associated with, associated with those hops are going to get boiled off. So anything that we want to have um, aromas to, uh, we want to add at the end of the boil so we don't lose lose those good smells. Our hour is up and uh, the alarm went off so we're going to um, get ready to transfer the, our pot over and uh, begin our cooling process. So I'm going to take my hop bag out. If um, if you weren't using a hot bag, then, then you can just uh, immediately take it off the stove here. Now is when we're going to have to start paying a little closer attention to um, how sterile things are. Because while everything has been boiling, obviously everything is sterile. But once we start cooling down, now we have to be a little more mindful of things. So be a little extra cautious of your hands or spoons or anything that's going to happens to be around your, your beer here. And one last thing I'm going to do is I have my wort chiller ready here. Now you don't have to have a wort chiller for cooling but it is handy. I had it in my sterilizing bucket and now I'm going to actually just set this in my pot and allow the, the boiling wort to completely sterilize it. If you don't have a wort chiller don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. It's just a handy device that, that uh, makes your cooling time much much quicker but not an essential thing. And at this point, I'm going to just move it over to our sink and begin to add water. 
You can add ice in here too, and uh, and then just carefully stir the wort around so you get a little better heat transfer and, and get that heat to be cooled out. Obviously it's been boiling so we're at 212 degrees. We want to get this cool back down to around 70 degrees before we add our yeast. We add the yeast when it's real hot, but we're going to just kill the yeast off. So you can use a combination of ice and water to cool the pot down or a wort chiller. So we have this hooked up to our spigot here and uh, we're circulating cold water through a coil to uh, cool the wort back down. I have my temperature gauge back in, I sterilized it before I set it in the pot. You can kind of stir this a little bit, it helps with the heat transfer. Alright, so we just got done finishing cooling our wort down so now we're ready to get it transferred into our, our fermenting bucket and top off the water. Our bucket has been sterilized and ready to go. And um, at this point, to keep it simple, I just pour the whole thing over. Some instructions will tell you to uh, siphon out of the pot to leave some of the sediment behind, or you can use a, a funnel and a screen and, and filter any, anything out. Uh, it takes a little more time, but we had it cooled down to about 68 degrees. And now we're just going to top off with our water. The water's been sitting at room temperature, so this should be just about right. We'll double check our temperature. I have my thermometer sticker on here, and it's showing in the uh, upper mid 60s for our, our liquid yeast. We had this out for several hours, and I'm just going to gently shake this up a little bit to get all sediment mixed in. If you're just using a dry yeast liquid package, just use a scissors. This is foaming up a little bit. The white ladders you'll sometimes get that. If it's a good active yeast, it's gonna wanna, it's, it's kinda ready to go. So I'm slowly just cracking this open so it doesn't go spraying out. At this point, we're ready to close it off because we wanna now keep this as a, a closed environment that we don't have any other kind of yeast or bacteria get in to add any off flavors. The last thing we can do then is pop our little lid off and I'll get a little water. Actually, I'll use a little of my sterilizing water here and we'll just pour this over and fill it up half full. And this is going to be our barrier. It won't allow any anything in but it will allow gases to bubble through our airlock. We're pretty much done. You can put it in a uh, off in a corner somewhere in your house. The idea is you just want to try to find a place where uh, it's going to stay at room temperature between 65 to 75. Generally rule of thumb is you don't want to bottle your beer uh, until about two weeks from day one. Uh, feel free to um, give us a call at our store or check out the, the website. We have all our stuff there. Uh, we do free brewing demonstrations also so you can come out and check out some of those too. So. Uh, thanks for listening and have a great day.